Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. Real quick update about the Sci-Fi Fandom Files podcast. It did was released today. So it was released today. Uh, it's their newest podcast. It has uh, it has Snyder Cut in the title, and um, it, it's a good one. I think it's a pretty good win. I think they've uh, what what I really liked is that they included my entire interview <laughs> while I was driving. So I was driving out of my earphones on. They included my entire interview and it seems like at the end of the interview I was kind of worried about what they were going to say, but at the end they appeared to be taken aback uh from the response that they got and uh I think uh it actually made them kind of open their minds a little bit I think um, not uh, open their minds about what type of people are in you know the Snyder Cut movement we're a diverse group we're all around the world all types of people and we just want to see uh, Zack Snyder's uh, work get respected you know his art is respected so I think uh, they were really open to that now and uh, uh, that's a good I think I call that a win in, in any case so they were really nice about it and uh, I think I've opened up their minds to our movement and hopefully we'll see more and more people like that more and more people being open to wanting to see it i mean the the host himself said if the snyder cut comes down blu-ray he'd buy it so i i i like that i i think that's a, a great way to promote this snyder cut movement uh in a positive light and i think uh i welcome that so i hopefully the more and more people reach out to us and and you know i i really want someone to really interview interview jay oliva you know just get him on a podcast you know that would be so perfect and it would really blow it wide open i think i think of course he has ndas as well so he might not be able to talk about that but uh if you haven't checked it out i've done two podcasts uh two uh the recently uh one with uh, comic movie marks on sunday so check them out at comic movie marks we did uh we had fun we had some laughs it was a fun show i like them they're they're really awesome uh, probably kind of people i could probably hang out with uh, in real life and also of course my friends over at uh dc films hub podcast check them out on the podcast any podcast channel uh i had a uh, little uh, conversations with John Aaron Garza and Benjamin Everts and so it, it was really good uh, really cool weekend to just hang out with the fandom and hang out with uh, the people who are alike in our tastes and uh, just hang out with that it was, it was really cool so check those out DC Films Hub Podcast and also Comic Movie Marks and also The Fandom Files you can go on any of those podcasts stream by I check out Podbean or or um, Spotify, uh, Sci-Fi, the Fandom Files. So check those out. Okay, now on to the uh, something I wanted to talk about over the weekend, but I haven't gotten into it. Um, according to Discussing Film, the rumored Birds of Prey synopsis is is this: After splitting up with the Joker, Harley Quinn, and three other female superheroes, Black Canary, Huntress, Renee Montoya, come together to save the life of a little girl, Cassandra Kane, from an evil crime lord so it's a basic a plot and uh it's um interesting they're saying after splitting up the joker uh harley quinn and suicide squad got back together the joker so i don't know how that would play out or if they're going to change anything from that or just retcon that who knows um the three other female superheroes black canary huntress and renee renee montoyo i already said that there were different talks of different casts or their short list which is actually probably maybe more a fan list but um they're coming to save a little life of a little girl so cassandra kane's gonna be a little girl um probably illiterate just like in the comics and so they're gonna um save her from an evil crime lord and so we were been all wondering who's this evil crime lord they've been saying that's penguin and so on such and so forth um but apparently from today uh the rap has reported that um the the evil crime lord villain is no other than possibly uh well i'm assuming <laughs> black mask so black mask is the villain of the story i'm not sure if he's the evil crime lord but it makes sense because he's an evil 
crime lord. But Black Mask is going to be the villain for Birds of Prey, which is interesting because we thought Black Mask was going to be the villain for Gotham City Sirens, that David Ayer was teasing Black Mask for a while now, uh, for a long time from now. Um, and, you know, he kind of stopped. But him talking to Paul Denny uh, seems to have been something else maybe altogether, but the villain of Gotham City Sirens is now the villain of Birds of Prey, so they really are combining a little bit of Gotham City Sirens, whatever story that uh, David Ayer is working on, to Birds of Prey, and so Birds of Prey are going to go up against Black Mask. The first time we're going to see an iteration of Black Mask on the big screen, including Black Canary, including Huntress, including Renee Montoya, and Cassandra Kane. So it's uh it's it's pretty exciting. I think it's pretty exciting that we're going out this route, uh, and it's great to see other villains that we have not seen before to the live action, uh, other rather than using people we've already seen and such. So this is a great, uh, awesome. DC news for uh, for people who are interested in Birds of Prey. Of course, this is all in the Gotham universe. You know, it's all in the Batman uh, family. So, so it's, it's I want to see more uh, uh, away from the Bat family, and I think we're gonna get that in the ways of Supergirl. Supergirl. That's right. They're gonna make a Supergirl movie. So it's being reported. This is coming from the Hollywood Reporter. Supergirl may be flying onto the big screen, all right? DC and Warner Brothers have tapped Oren Uziel to pen the script. I think that's how you say his name. Now, Oren Uziel is one of the writers behind 22 Jump Street and The Cloverfield Paradox. Has been tapped to pen a feature for DC and Warner Brothers about the Krypton-born superhero the Hollywood Reporter has confirmed. Now, everything after that is just basically, you know, other stuff. But um, Superman's older cousin, she didn't physically age and transit to Earth and arrive later than he did, explaining why she looks younger than him. So uh, that's basically Kara Zor-El. That's who she is. She's, she's a Supergirl. Now, People are kind of like, oh, Supergirl, where is my Superman? You don't understand. You don't understand. What, depending on the iteration of this Supergirl, okay, we, we're not quite sure. But for the most part, Superman will probably be in this. Is it going to be Henry Cavill? I know he's still renegotiating or negotiating his contract as Superman, but if it's tapped, this might be one of those uh, contracts that he could probably be, you know, cued in on. So um, he could possibly show up in Supergirl. Now, I'm the the best. Well, for me, uh, the one Supergirl storyline that I like is within the Batman Superman storyline. I don't know if you've seen this, but uh, so like this one, um, there was a, a small series and they even made an animated movie uh, with a, a Supergirl of Apocalypse. And so w what it is, is she comes down and... Um, You've got Superman uh, trying to mentor her, and then Wonder Woman also trains her, and then Batman kind of like, well, I'm not really sure about her. Uh, and it's so cool. They had an animated movie. You should check that out. And it, they even had things like there's a bunch of doomsdays that they're fighting off or doomsday clones and things like that. But it's mainly that. I mean, imagine a big movie like this, and it has, like, dark side in it. Uh, it has, uh, uh, you know, her being possessed you know the the anti-life equation uh and uh well i don't know was it yeah so anyway she becomes evil for a bit and and she she um helps dark side and we even have like batman fighting dark side and and then um you know we it's it's huge i mean it's it may be not like that as i think they're gonna try to go more solo route but imagine them taking elements of that, especially in a world that already has a Batman, that already has a Superman, and already has a Wonder Woman. I mean, there's a lot to take in here, um, and I, I can't be any more excited. I mean, even in the Justice Supergirl, right? Wonder Woman took her on and, uh, you know, trained her and stuff like that. That could possibly happen as well. But you can't, I mean, you really got to be excited about this. Having another Superman, can, more cameo in this, maybe more as a supporting character 
Superman could be a supporting character in Supergirl uh, instead of being a cameo in a possibly Shazam film, right? Like in Shazam, you'll probably expect him to be more of a cameo. But in the Supergirl movie, you can bet your butt it's got to be a supporting character. And then if we, depending on the route they go with Supergirl, they, they could, hopefully it's not so much uh, Supergirl CW as, uh, and I'll think so, because they wouldn't want to try to copy that. They would try to make it their own. Uh, and, and since it's a movie, it's got to be pretty damn epic. So I'm, I'm I'm hoping for the apocalypse thing, but I I really I, you know maybe not maybe they'll just take elements of it, uh, mentoring her and uh, not unsure of she's unsure of her powers, but she's you know really powerful and uh, it could have something like that and I think. Uh, with that uh, family dynamic between Superman and the mentoring and you know Wonder Woman, I think it, it, it could be a really great story for that. Now we know there was those little hints that maybe uh, there's Carazorel had already happened before in, in the Man of Steel comic book, but you know Zack Snyder had said that's not Kara. Uh, he had put Kara in plain sight, or at least hinted at Kara and how Supergirl could be in plain sight in his movie. But, you know, who who knows what that I'm thinking it has something to do with the the uh, uh, the the DNA of the Kryptonians. But, you know, that could be retconned already. So we don't know what's going to happen with this. Uh, I st I truly hope uh, Henry Cavill signs finally signs the dotted line to make sure he's in many more Superman movies. But, hey, Supergirl with Man of Steel. In it, you know, I always thought a Man of Steel sequel could involve Supergirl and Brainiac in some sense, but looks like this may be it. You know, you never know. Maybe this is <laughs> your Man of Steel sequel in, in in a way, in a way. So that excites me to no end, and I can't wait to hear more. But there's a lot of stuff going on in the DCEU, so uh, I, I'm really excited to hear what happens tomorrow. I mean, it really is coming out, and it's really cool. Now I know Lord Paulus Combri has been uh, talking a lot of bit stuff about Snyder Cut and the future of the DCEU. I did invite him to come to my show so um, I didn't get a chance to look in the comments but I think he said yes uh, so maybe we'll try to get something squared away um, I believe he I hope he talks very good English and would understand me and I would understand him um, and you know because you know I don't know if he Google translates stuff but um, I really hope that we could have him come on the show. Maybe he can explain how he knows so much and what he knows and things like that. Of course, he can't really talk much if he is on a, under an NDA. But uh, I, since he's commented on my videos so much, I thought it would be a great uh, bit to do, a uh, little great uh, show to do, uh, interview to do, maybe later, sometime later, uh, as soon as I find out his time zones and if we match up at all. But anyway, that is it. Very very excited this looks like to be a really female superhero powered DCEU and that's fine uh, I'm just so happy they're finally opening up the Superman family instead of just going Batman family all this time alright guys well thank you so much for subscribing thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time bye